Joining me is Congresswoman Karen Bass, a member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Uh, Congresswoman, it's great to have you with me, and we know that uh, we have a lot to talk about when it comes to health care, but I want to start with this because the president is saying that he is meeting with leaders of majority Muslim countries on his first trip uh, in Riyadh. Uh, do you think that that is going to help with any of the damage that was uh, baked in from trying to pull off a Muslim ban that has been deemed unconstitutional? Well, I absolutely don't think it will be. As a matter of fact, I think it would be rather offensive. You know, and it's not just the fact that he continues to pursue the Muslim ban, but it's the very flippant way in which he talks about Middle East policy. Remember, he said, you know, I, I just don't even understand why we can't come to a deal. Everything is a deal for him, and he's shown in his first hundred plus days how good he is at making deals. Uh, so my concern is, is that going over to the Middle East, I think it could wind up being quite an embarrassment. Well, he, he has made uh, comments about uh, Middle East peace shouldn't be that hard to do, or it's not that right. hard to do. Uh, Just like health care. <laughs> he's going to try, though, uh, with, uh, as presidents before, ha have always gone in to uh, try to help with this and, and settle differences uh, between Israel and the Palestinians, as well as the Saudis hoping that the president will help put them back on track uh, and make a deal uh, back in Iran. Do you think that these are too many pie-in-the-sky ideas for them to tackle all at once? Well, again, I think it's a very superficial approach. You do have to look at the fact that we have a Secretary of State who essentially doesn't have any assistant secretaries under him. So, and this is the case with many of the uh, agencies. Many of his cabinet officers don't really have an infrastructure uh, below them. And I think that could be one reason why he has a very superficial approach to uh, very complicated international issues. But Jared Kushner is the one that is uh, taking care of Middle East Case peace. in point. Not so much his, uh, Rex Tillerson. So Case in point. His son-in-law, who has a background in what? Business, real estate. Not Middle East policy. Right. As complicated as it is, how many presidents have attempted to solve that problem? Uh, one thing uh, that I do want to get on record with you about uh, health care. Uh, we yes. know uh, that uh, the issue of uh, the GOP passing this bill, the Senate is now uh, taking up the, the mantle of this. No women are involved uh, on the Senate <laughs> side, the working committee for this. Uh, how do you think that's going to go over and how do Republicans sell this uh, if they don't have the input of the other 50 plus percent gender uh, included of our American population? Well, I mean, sadly, I have to say I wasn't surprised. I mean, we see this happening on the House side all the time. I sit on the Judiciary Committee. We now have one woman on the committee. But before that, you know, I would sit, spend hours listening to the men on the committee talk about women's health issues uh, in Judiciary. So I'm not surprised by it. But I really do think that we need to pay close attention to what the Republicans are saying about Trump care. Because when they talk about pre-existing conditions being covered, it is just simply not true. Unfortunately, there's a lot of this new law that they are just lying about, and I am hopeful that the Senate will put it to rest and kill it. There's a lot that can be improved with uh, the Affordable Care Act, and we need to change from repeal and replace to repair and improve. There's a lot of improvement that can be done, and I'm hoping that the Senate will look at it from that perspective. When it comes to Sally Yates' uh, testimony tomorrow with the Senate Intelligence Committee, uh, we were talking earlier with our Ken Delanian in D.C. Uh, about any really explosive testimony. Are you hearing or have heard uh, kind of an indicator uh, of, of what people can prepare for tomorrow uh, out of that testimony? Well, yes, and I'm, I'm certainly hoping that she will come and explain the real reason why she was fired. One of the things that I think might happen is to understand when the Trump administration was warned about Flynn. And there's a lot of evidence there that I believe she will talk about that they had had discussions. They knew he was a problem, and the Trump administration went forward with him anyway. Now, remember, they said the reason why they fired him was because he lied, but I really question whether that was the the case at all. Uh, Congresswoman, it's good to have you with me. Karen Bass, member of the House Foreign Relations Committee. Congresswoman